everyone, this is Rob Roy, and welcome to the LA Wave Options U.S. Market Update. For those of you that have been watching us over the uh, years, you can tell from the background that I am now up in the uh, mountain cabin, had to get out of that uh, heat box of Florida. So after last night's insiders meeting that we do every Thursday night for our alert subscribers at EvoTrader.com, literally got in the car and uh, drove all night to get here to, uh, before Chairman Powell spoke. But I have an interesting story for you. Uh, when I stopped for gas, uh, stop for gas, one stop. So uh, stop and then go to the bathroom. I'm walking out of the uh, convenience store and an elderly lady gets out of the car very nice and says, hey, you know, you look like Chuck Norris. <laughs> I didn't have a hat on or anything. Uh, it's amazing how often that uh, comes up. So as you know, we're pushing towards 40,000 subscribers. Now, if you post your favorite Chuck Norris one-liner, we're gonna enter you in twice. So every comment that has to do with a uh, famous Chuck Norris one-liner uh, gives you a double entry. So with that, um, let's have some fun with it and let's get to 40,000 and give those uh, subscriptions away. All right, taking a look at the market. As you can see, uh, we did trade lower today and then back up, up to the upside uh, into the close. Now, yesterday we had an outside day where we had a, a high of the day above the high of the previous day and a low of the day below the low of the previous day. And we opened on the high and closed on the low, which meant anything could happen today. Well, then Chairman Powell comes out and stargazing. So he's like, uh, we are uh, um, searching under the stars uh, or looking at the stars under cloudy skies. Um, I don't know what that is. I thought that Alan Greenspan used to give us some really crazy comments, uh, but Chairman Powell, I think, topped it with uh, gazing at the stars under cloudy sky. I don't know what the hell that means, but basically that's what he said. Um, seriously, uh, basically what he talked about was the Fed is ready to raise, high, uh, raise rates again uh, if needed. Uh, another rate hike if needed at the November meeting is what the Fed Fund Futures is pricing in. It's a 50% chance, so it's 50-50, flip a coin on whether or not they do it or not. But he's also saying that uh, we are going to stay data dependent. So um, there was some for everyone. He wasn't overly hawkish. He wasn't overly dovish. He was somewhere in the middle. And for someone like me that's been criticizing him for flip-flopping so much, uh, I think he kind of stayed with the uh, uh, the course on this one. So, you know, if you were looking for a dovish comment, you could make your case. If you're looking for a hawkish comment, you can make your case. Uh, the market uh, was up uh, before he started speaking, immediately sold off when he said they were ready to raise rates again if needed. Uh, and then the market, after the sell-off, turned and rallied back. So a bit of intraday volatility. And in the end, we finish a bit to the upside, but we did not take out yesterday's high. And that's the key. So when we look at the major moving averages, as you know, the lime green line is the 10 day moving average. You can see we traded right at the 50 day moving average at the close, which means who knows what happens on Monday. I feel like it was uh, OK. He didn't say anything, you know, super bullish. He didn't say anything super bearish. Uh, and so here we sit as we move into the weekend. Uh, now, we had talked about a move down to 440, and we've done that. In Tuesday night's Trade Finder, we actually introduced a subject, which I think is uh, really interesting, an out-of-the-money butterfly. Most people are used to doing butterflies uh, as a sideways position, but you can make them directional by placing them out of the money. And I do kind of feel that uh, we are likely, especially now uh, when um, Chairman Powell didn't say anything overly dovish, uh, to see a test of 420. And why? Because there's a lot of support there. Remember back when 420 was a resistance area uh, and we kept looking for that and then we got there and look how long we stayed underneath that level as resistance. We broke above it. Feels like we need to come down and test that level now, especially since we closed today, even with the rally into the close underneath the 50 day moving average. So we talked about that 
on Tuesday night. And if you haven't joined us for Trade Finder, you can go to our website, evotrader.com, click on the link. It's free. We do it every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. We talk about the markets. We look for trade ideas, a la something uh, interesting like this. And then we have a live Q&A at the end. It's a lot of fun. We have a great community um, and everybody gets along really well and love to have you join us. So uh, sign up and uh, join us next week if you haven't so far already. All right, so not much else to say regarding the S&P. Uh, we are at a 35% wave four correction. And I feel like if we do come down towards that 420 level, that gets us in the area of the 61.8% FIB corrective level, the strongest of all the FIB levels, in my opinion. So I think that's a point where perhaps we could find some really solid support and then maybe start looking towards when the Fed is actually going to start cutting rates again rather than raising rates. So anyway, when we're done stargazing, perhaps we can start looking at uh, potentially uh, cutting rates. All right, I'm done picking on uh, Chairman Powell, but that was uh, that was he top Greenspan on that one. So looking at the Dow, uh, we have come down. We did break below the 345 level uh, right here, which was an area of potential support. Uh, and then we turned around and came right back up to it on the close today. So we broke it, we're testing it, and you can see on the previous few days, so a lot of testing going on on this 345 level. Note the wave five did not extend beyond 100%. If that wave five is indeed done, then we should see a retracement back to the previous four, which means a DIA down around 335. I think that's uh, probably likely. Uh, looking at the Qs, uh, and you would think, all right, you know, um, interest rates are going up. The dollar's staying strong. We talked about that in our uh, live um, market uh, uh, Q&A. Uh, and by the way, if you uh, haven't uh, registered for that, you can go over to the Hub Financial channel uh, on YouTube here. Register at Hub Financial. And uh, you can join us every Friday at 2 p.m. And we do a little bit of a market what's going on intraday and live Q&A. Uh, today, we talked a little bit more about uh, Chairman Powell's speech, uh, but usually we uh, we have a, a, a nice Q&A session. So I'd love to have you there. So Hub Financial over on YouTube uh, to join us there. Uh, so talking about interest rates, stagnant to a little bit to the upside, the dollar staying strong. It's not really a great environment for the tech stocks. Uh, and we kind of hung in there. Uh, honestly, on the queues, a bit surprising to me. Uh, yesterday made a lot of sense to me uh, with rates moving to the upside that we came back down to test the 360. But the fact that we held it and closed above it into the close gives you some uh, hope uh, moving into next week that maybe we can start to look past uh, one more rate hike uh, in November from the Fed and begin to look down the road towards a potential uh, rate cut. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're only at a 26% wave four correction. Uh, the next level, if you're wondering, okay, well, if we don't hold 360, where do we go? Well, there's not much before 340. So the queues do need to hold here. Um, the Magnificent 7 or the Magnificent 1 with NVIDIA that we'll talk about in a moment um, needs to hang on, hold us in there uh, and stay above this 360 level because without that holding its support, it's a pretty easy move to 340 due to the fact that we move from 340 to 360 pretty much vertically to the upside. Taking a look at the IWM, if you're a fan that the, the small caps give you a, an idea of risk on, risk off. Um, Big move to the downside. Now check this chart out. The wave five didn't extend 100%, which means you should go back to the previous four. And where is the previous four? We're not there yet, but it's right at 180, exactly where we've been talking about. We had this level between 170 and 190 for so long uh, on the IWM, and then we tightened it up between 170 and 180 here uh, in March, April, and May. Uh, we broke above it, came down and tested it. Seems like we want to come down to that level. Look like maybe that was going to happen today, especially after uh, Chairman Powell's comments. But we reversed just before we got there. But I still feel like we're going to see 180 on the IWM. And at that point in time, then we'll take a look and see what happens from there. Uh, Bitcoin, got to throw Bitcoin in there. Um, that big drop, we held 29,000 for so long. We had talked about that. And if we uh, could hold 29,000, maybe with the halving coming up uh, the first quarter next year, we could bounce from here. But if we didn't, where would we go? 
And uh, I think we nailed that pretty spot on. Uh, if we didn't hold 29,000, we're going to come down here around 26,000 because that's where support was. It's where the previous three was. And even when I was talking about the potential, the longer we held 29,000, I thought the better chance we might have of a bounce to the upside. Uh, but I think you would agree that I always made the comment, you got to keep in the back of your head the fact that that move from 26 to 29 was so vertical. And you know I don't like vertical moves. Well, it goes vertically up. All of it comes vertically back down, and in the end, that's what happened. It took a while, but it eventually happened. So now we see if we can hold 26,000 on Bitcoin. Now, one thing I wanted to share with you uh, as we're looking at uh, stocks of interest is taking a look at the SLV. Um, kind of a big move to the upside here surprised me a little bit. Uh, I thought we would have to have a much weaker dollar. Uh, to get a gap up like that. So we did get the big gap up, but then nothing since then, no follow through since then. Uh, so this this big gap move here surprised me, um, but now we're just kind of hanging in there. Uh, maybe we're just gonna uh, allow that 10 day moving average to continue to catch up after the gap. And then, you know, you, you gotta keep that in the back of your mind, the gap, but uh, it's starting to become interesting with the fact that we're holding 22 now, which we broke above. So now that becomes support. So the fact that we're above that, uh, all of a sudden, I think uh, uh, the metals become interesting. It's just confusing because normally you would have needed the dollar to soften a little bit to have a move like that uh, out of SLV. We had a tiny move down in the dollar, just a very small move. And we got this big gap up in the SLV. GLD didn't move quite as much, but SLV did. Why? It's really interesting um, as to uh, what caused that. But, um, you know, there's times when you try to figure out what the market's doing and there's times when you listen to what the market's telling you. Uh, and this is one of those instances where you get a big move up. We've broken above 22. And I think at the beginning of next week, you can make a pretty good case that you might want to take a shot. Uh, speculative type money uh, on a long position in SLV as long as we hold above that 22 level. If we break below 22, that's your stop. Um, we could come all the way back down to 21, so don't hang in there that long. But you could look at that with the consolidation that we've had. We didn't give it back. We didn't come back and fill that gap. So holding above 22, I think, makes the SLV very, very interesting going into next week. More stocks of interest, of course, we have to talk about, um, you know, the uh, Magnificent One, as they were calling it, NVIDIA. So many people asking, especially on our uh, live show on Friday, should we get in front of uh, NVIDIA on earnings? And I was cautious. I said, if you want to play it, please take a small position. Don't load the boat, back of the truck, pick your favorite cliche, um, because it's priced for perfection. And lo and behold, they came out and they blew away earnings. Um, just knocked it out of the park. So blew away earnings, knocked it out of the park. Again, pick your favorite cliche. And then they really surprised on guidance. And so after hours, uh, the futures were up. NVIDIA was up big. But you can see that although that we kind of held into the open, not where we were after hours, but we open on the high and then trade it down to the low. And then here we just kind of not much today uh, back to the downside. So two days in a row here following that earnings report, uh, not much going on. So hopefully um, if you participate in it, you got out at the open uh, or you didn't put too big of a position on it. it this, I, I, I thought it was price for perfection. It's hard to imagine a better earnings report than what they came out with. They are the leader. They're in the right space. Um, the multiple was very high. And as I said, it was priced for perfection. But boy, did they deliver a great earnings report. And even that couldn't hold it there. So maybe it just needs to catch its breath a little bit. And if the market uh, stays with any sort of strength, we can uh, look to move back to the upside next week. But the fact that we couldn't hold that big earnings uh, gap up uh, and came back down, you have to be a little bit suspect of not just NVIDIA, but the Qs in general uh, and the market, I think, as a whole. Uh, because if that couldn't move the needle to the upside, I don't know what can. Other stocks of interest, uh, Affirm, some of you have asked about that uh, in the past, had a really good, surprisingly good earnings report. And there you see the big move to the upside 
there uh, with this wave four right at 74%. That's awfully close to disqualification, but we have the 78.6% FIB level, which keeps that uh, as a qualified pattern. Hence the reason the four is labeled. So perhaps we get some follow through here uh, with more short covering is what I would assume uh, is what would create the move back to the upside. And then if we take a look at volume, there you go. When you see that kind of that short covering, um, that's not just institutional buying or a retail buying. When you get that kind of volume, it's a combination of everything, including short covering. So a lot of people very surprised about that. Um, but some of you've asked about it in the past, so I thought I'd go ahead and uh, uh, show that one. Uh, and then uh, even last night in our insiders meeting, we had a question about uh, um, HE, Hawaii Electronics. You all know what happened in Maui uh, and now Maui County is suing um, Hawaiian uh, Electric. So um, we talked about this last night and we said that um, with where the chart was, you had to watch the 10 level. And if we broke below 10, you had to be really careful because I know people are trying to catch a falling knife here. You know, it's a, you know, it's an electric company. At, at some point you think they're going to survive this and come back, but where's the bottom? Well, breaking below 10 is concerning. So that's why I wanted to show this again, since we had just talked about it last night uh, and then the news came out. So it's exactly what we talked about in our insiders meeting last night. And again, that's for alert subscribers only at EWOTrader.com. And we talked about the fact that we don't know the exposure yet. That was what we talked about. And that's what came out today, more exposure with the lawsuits. So breaking below 10, we could easily see this come down to five. So if you were one of those that was trying to find a bottom here and pick a bottom and uh, maybe get some sort of a, uh, uh, a, a nice um, oversold gap back to the upside or whatever, I think you need to be a little more patient here. I'm not sure that we're done to the downside, especially breaking 10. If we follow that through on Monday, I really do think we see five. And then maybe we can take a look at it at that point in time. Now, Ulta had a great earnings report, um, but look what happened to the stock. Uh, initially looked great, uh, but then it reversed and traded near the low. Uh, and here, this is in a uh, five wave to the downside pattern. Once again, the wave four above 70%, but not quite to the 78.6% level. Uh, a really good earnings report and we're trading lower. So we're starting to see these signs where I think we need to be really careful and cautious on the market, really pick your spots. And, you know, I go back to NVIDIA, if that doesn't get it done, I really don't know what does. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, Tesla. Um, people have been asking about that. Uh, and, um, you know, Elon came out and again, reiterated the fact that, uh, I mean, it's just yesterday, or the day before, um, that it's gonna be a rough quarter. And we talked about this way back up here at 260. It was like, where's the catalyst? Even though we're sitting here at support, where's the catalyst to move higher when Elon Musk comes out and says, we're going to shut factories down. Production's going to be down. Um, you're not going to see the number of vehicles delivered. It's going to be a rough quarter. And, you know, hopefully people listened uh, and we broke to the downside and look where we came down. Now, this is different. This wave four is right at the 61.8% FIB level, the strongest of all FIB levels. It's trying its best to hold there. And in addition to having that really strong FIB level, uh, we're right at an area of support there in the 220 area. So perhaps uh, Tesla can hold here. So I'd keep a really close eye on this. It's gone sideways since. So we hit that 61.8% level right at 220. We bounced up. We've gone sideways a little bit. So keep an eye on that. If it breaks below 220, I think you need to, to exit this. But if you're looking for you know, some sort of a speculative entry on Tesla, perhaps you have it now um, with both support and that 61 0.8% FIB level. Looking at one of the international markets to wrap things up uh, this weekend, uh, we got to look at India. It's been uh, performing so well. The INDA, and look at that. Uh, we did have a little bit of a correction following this really impressive 45 degree angle move here. I talk about that all the time. This is what I like, not the vertical moves, because when you have a 45 degree angle, the corrections are not as severe. Uh, and so we have a little bit of a move. We're only at the 23.6% FIB level. So you have to be 
just a tiny bit cautious that that may not be the end of it. We may have just bounced off that uh, level and perhaps we uh, come back to the downside, but uh, so far so good. Um, the impressive thing to me on the INDA is it held right at the 10 day moving average and above the 50 day moving average. And even though this could just be a short term bounce off that not so strong 23.6% FIB level. As long as we stay above those major moving averages, I think you can look to uh, see if uh, uh, INDA can catch itself and perhaps start to move up towards that wave five. But a break below the 50 day moving average. And if we take out that uh, low there from uh, the 18th, uh, of August, then I think you have to look at the next FIB level, probably down around 38.2. But for now, um, maybe again, a spot for uh, some sort of uh, speculative money. Um, so in the beginning, we showed you the uh, stocks. Uh, and as a reminder, if you uh, have a particular stock you're interested in, you can go right to it on the chapters feature without watching the entire video. But thank you. Uh, I think this is a really important one uh, with uh, the um, Jackson Hole meeting last year. Um, Chairman Powell really kind of crushed the market going into October, uh, saying that pain was coming. He didn't give us that this time, but he also didn't give us a whole lot to be uh, really excited about, just kind of a middle of the road. So uh, um, enjoy your weekend and look forward to talking again. Take care, everybody. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market is likely going to go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.